the Cincinnati Reds won a wild extra inning game that really buried the lead because Tyler Malley tossed the best game by a Reds pitcher this year and got a no decision for his efforts. We'll look at the historic nature of that no decision and why the game was so wild in the first place on today's Locked On Reds. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds. Thanks for making Locked On Reds your first listen of the day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and we're free and available on all podcasting platforms. I'm your host, Stephen Offenbaker, alongside Jeff Carr, and we have a passion for baseball. We have a passion for the Cincinnati Reds, and we have taken that passion and we have turned it into information for you. On today's podcast, we're going to talk about an amazing start from Tyler Malley, a wild extra inning affair out in Phoenix, and about how some negligence on the part of general manager Nick Crawl nearly cost the Reds the game last night. We're also going to take a look at some possible injuries that occurred late in that game last night and what the Reds might do about them with a roster that has already been decimated by injury. Uh, Jeff, I think uh, if you watch this game, it's almost it's almost like we we had two different games to to look at because, well, (laughs) there was the the pitching duel that occurred for the first nine innings. And then there was the offensive onslaught that developed in extra innings. Uh, thanks largely in part to Manfred hates baseball's ghost runner rule, which I hate, but let's start with Tyler Malley and what he did on the mound, Jeff, because it was nothing short of spectacular nine yes. innings pitch nine innings, Jeff, 12 yes. K's zero count them. None bases on balls, no walks, and only allowing three hits. That was beautiful baseball by Tyler Malley. And they were talking about it on both broadcasts because I listened a little bit and I watched a little bit. And on both broadcasts, Chris Welsh and Jeff Brantley were talking about how well Tyler Malley was getting ahead of hitters. It felt like he started every at bat with a, with a strike one. And the number of times that he got the three balls was probably, you could probably count it on one hand, how many times he got to a three ball count. This was a totally different Tyler Malley than we're used to because, you know, John Sadak said on the television broadcast, usually he's to 90 pitches by the fifth inning. He was entering the eighth inning with 90 pitches. He was on it. He was missing bats and he was being efficient on top of missing bats. It was dare I say a perfect outing, obviously not perfect because he gave up hits, but he was as close to perfect as you can get. There's a couple things from this start, Jeff. And, and just, and before we move into that, you know, I want to make mention that this was in fact uh, a historical result for Tyler Malley. And once again, Uh, not in a good way Uh, for the first time in the modern era, meaning for the first time in modern baseball, since like 1905, I 1905, think. 1905, I think that's the cutoff yeah. line, 1904, 1905. A really long time, Jeff, for the first time ever. Tyler Malley is the first pitcher to throw nine innings, strike out 12, and not get the win. <laughs> it has never happened before in the modern era. Uh, Let that sink in for uh, just a second. That's like, you know... Across the way in the NL Central, the Pirates played the Cardinals, and the Cardinals almost no hit them. And I'm like, well, how about that? The Pirates losing a no hitter. That that's something that would have been nice to see from the Reds whenever they no hit them. But of course, that didn't work out either. No, this is just another weirdness. There's been so much weirdness about this season, and that you know they have crazy losing streaks. Now, by the way, they're a game and a half out of third of the NL Central right now. Like, yes, the Reds are not only almost not last, they're also almost third. Like, this is just the weirdest of seasons. A good week could put this team 
at least in a better position in the division, not in a position where we're talking about, hey, they could sneak up to the top. That's not happening. But we're talking about at least a respectable position of mediocrity, which where we were a couple of months ago is like saying they went to the friggin' moon. I mean, the, this game was just so wild to see because not only did Tyler Malley pitch amazingly, but the lineup actually had opportunities. They were 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position. Oh, for nine. And there were a couple of times that Mike Moustakis tattooed a baseball only to see it fly on the warning track, which I got to believe that, that that just screams dead baseball to me, which also screams some kind of weird thing that Rob Manfred came up. And oh, by the way, that came up in extra innings too. <laughs> you know, something else you're talking about guys tagging the ball. Nick Senzel absolutely was just crushing the baseball tonight yes. for big giant loud long outs and i think all three of those hits at great american ballpark probably get over the wall but not in that giant outfield that is phoenix but a couple more things from this tyler malley start jeff uh this is his third straight start where he's really been impressive in fact over the last three starts he has a total of 21 innings pitched he's only allowed four earned runs in those 21 innings and in those 21 innings jeff 28 k's and only four walks mm. and this is what we always talk about with tyler o'malley right if he could consistently do this holy crap we're talking about a top 10 pitcher in the major leagues it's just Cy that Young consistency votes. Yes, Cy Young votes. It's just that consistency. But it's it's lovely to see. And I mean, when Tyler Malley is on, there are few pitchers that are better than Tyler Malley. It's just what Tyler Malley you're going to get. But hey, here recently, he has been phenomenal. And it makes you wonder how much the Reds are going to go all in. It's it, a really good article by Charlie Goldsmith. Actually, it's more like a kind of a blog post, not necessarily posted on the Inquirer, but a blog post that he shared was that he is very confident that the Reds will make trades if the trades make sense to them, but they're not doing a full teardown like the Cubs did last year or like the Astros did, you know, in years back to build up to where they are now. They're not going to do that because they want to be competitive and things like that. And while there's a whole big segment that we could spend talking about, you know, go all in one way or the other, it's looking at this and saying, are they going to trade Tyler Malley? Because if they are, his value has got to be pretty stinking high right now. Well, and there is an emerging starting pitcher market right now. The Dodgers need an arm. The Blue Jays need an arm. Uh, players are getting injured league-wide. And, and the Reds have two bona fide number one, number two starters that they probably are going to be looking to move in Luis Castillo and Tyler Malley. So uh, I think that uh, it's a real possibility. Uh, it may not be 100% certainty, but it is definitely a real possibility. You know, before we get out of this segment, Jeff, there's one more person that I wanted to give some credit to because we talked about this yesterday and we talked about when things go right, the manager never gets credit. And I just want to shout out David Bell for a couple things. The first thing is having Tyler Malley go that deep in the game in the first place. You know, this was yep. the most pitches that Tyler Malley has thrown in a game. David Bell let him do it. And in the ninth inning, the second part that I want to credit Bell on is in the ninth inning, it looked like Mally was maybe in a little bit of trouble. Some things were going wonky. And Mally looks into the dugout to David Bell and says, I got this. And Bell stayed in the dugout and Bell let him finish the inning. And so credit to David Bell. You know, we talk about all the time that David Bell can't help but do something. And in this instance, he defied all of that. And he let Tyler Malley finish that ninth inning. So, you know, hat tip to the manager on that one. Yeah, there was no fiddling there, which is something that people always love to ding him on. And, and you know, you can talk about um, what he did with Matt Reynolds was kind of strange. I thought it was weird that he pinch ran for Moose after he'd already gotten a third. And he pinch ran for Moose instead of pinch hit for him the inning before whenever he was facing a lefty and Matt Reynolds isn't a lefty. But all of that aside, like he still makes good decisions where he can make them. And I was happy to see because you talk about a, a, a sequence of extra innings that was just so insane. And honestly, I think it was caused all because of the ghost runner, but all of it put together, you just kept watching it and you were like, oh my gosh, what <laughs> on earth is happening? 
Yeah, I had a couple meltdowns on Twitter during the extra innings and, oh. and some texts some text to you that I cannot read on the air that uh, <laughs> vented my frustration. But listen, yeah. we went into the 10th inning in a scoreless ball game, Jeff. And then the 10th yeah. inning, both both teams score their Manfred Hates Baseball ghost runner. Then in the 11th inning, the Reds put two runs on the board only to allow uh, two runs to score in the bottom of that frame. And we will uh, we'll get into exactly how that went down in the next segment and talk about why that uh, the action needs to be taken to rectify that. Then, of course, in the 12th inning, the Reds score two more uh, on a triple from Almora following uh, and then followed by a single from India. So the Ghost Runner scores there, Almora scores, Reds get the two runs that ultimately prove to be the game winners. What a wild bunch of extra innings. It was absolutely wild, Stephen. It actually kind of follows my br- blueprint that I said yesterday about how the Reds need to get six plus innings from their starter and they need to score five or more runs. It just took them 13 innings to get to five. So, yeah, that was good to see. I'll tell you what, though, uh, it's evident from this extra innings affair that Nick Crawl has failed to do his job as the general manager by going out and getting a veteran MLB catcher to fill in while Tyler Stevenson is out and you don't want to fail at your job and getting your significant other the perfect jewelry piece. So head on over to BlueNile.com right now. BlueNile.com, whether you are ready to pop the question, or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. You can build the engagement ring of her dreams. Blue Nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond's shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft her perfect engagement ring. Each ring is one of a kind. And if you're looking for fine jewelry to celebrate her special moment, but having trouble choosing, Blue Nile can help. They have jewelry experts on hand 24-7, available via phone or chat to help you find the memorable gift at every budget. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com, and Locked On Reds listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive also includes engagement rings. Use the promo code locked on that's code L O C K E D O N plus every order is insured ships free and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside shop stress free and find your forever peace. Go to blue Nile.com today. Thank you for making Locked On Reds your first listen. Starting June 16th, tomorrow, Locked On NBA brings you the ultimate NBA mock draft. Rafael Barlow from Locked On NBA Big Board is joined by every Locked On NBA host and some NBA insiders from Odyssey to deliver picks and analysis and get you ready for the NBA draft like no other network can because Locked On does mock drafts better than anybody. And the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is a perfect example. Also, make sure you're following the podcast on all platforms, including YouTube. Uh, (coughs) Crap. Man, I was rolling on that one, too. Um, You got to make sure and go check out the uh, conversation that Steve had with Cam Miller, our friend, who is from the Reds Hall of Fame Museum, but also a filmmaker. He made a beautiful movie about Riverfront Stadium. It's Riverfront Remembered. And in the conversation with Cam, Steve actually gets an exclusive first look at the movie. I'm telling you, exclusive means exclusive. You're not going to find it anywhere else. You're going to find it right here on the Locked On Reds YouTube page. So make sure you check it out. Make sure you follow us because we got so much great stuff coming for you on tomorrow's episode too. coming for you, by the way, got a crossover. Miller Thomas, our friend over at Locked On Diamondbacks, will be in to talk as we break down this series. We break down the season series in which the Reds actually beat the Diamondbacks because, Steve, I said they'd win two out of three, and they won the first two games, son. They can go up and get the third win and go five and two against the Diamondbacks team that beat them. What was it? Six out of seven last year. It was a I don't know. great turnaround from last year. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A very good turnaround against these D backs this season. But I tell you what, the, the win was great. And the fact that they've won two out of three is great. 
But there is something last night that is so evident to me and you and so evident to any Reds fans that watch that game. But yet some reason Nick crawl is sitting in his office thinking, Hey, we're all right here. Uh, they need to fix this right now. They need to fix it yesterday. Chris Oakey. I get it. He's a young guy. We're going to see if he's got his major league legs under him. He should not be the plan. Why is that the plan? He, it's like he looked up on his depth chart on the wall and he said, ah, who's the next guy? Who, who's this? We caught up Kozvari. Nah, not him, not him. I, I, okay. Oh, we haven't seen him yet. Oh, God, come on. Let's see what we got here. What we got? No, no more. No more. Go out and get a veteran catcher yesterday and help this th- team out. Tyler Stevenson is not coming back tomorrow. He's not coming back next week. He is gone for the next month to month and a half. And, and we're going to really sit here with Armas Garcia and Chris Oakey. <sighs> let me, Steve. let me just start by saying that Tyler Malley gave a lot of credit to Armas Garcia for the way that he called that game last night. And I think yeah. that Garcia did a respectable job and that's what you want from your number two catcher. Now, can he carry the load for the whole six weeks? No, he's going to have to have days off. The problem here is bringing up Chris Oki and I, and I get to some extent the reds trying to look from within, but clearly that is not going to work. Oki missed on the two pass balls in the 11th inning that allowed two unearned runs to score and the game to be tied. And it continued the game into the 12th. Uh, the yep. first of the pass balls, maybe that's on Sessa. Maybe you call that a wild pitch, but Sessa is clearly a guy that's going to throw that slider that breaks down into the dirt. That's how he gets people out. You need a catcher that can knock that ball down, that can smother it. Oki fell twice to do that. And on the second one, I mean, watching the replay of it, I feel like that second one was just a flat out whiff on the part of Chris Oakey. It it should have been smothered. It basically came right center towards his chest and he failed to knock it down. So for me, the time is now today, right this second, Nick Crawl needs to be on the phone finding a veteran backstop to play for the next six weeks while Tyler Stevenson is out. I understand catchers don't grow on trees, but go find somebody that has a little major league experience. They don't have to be able to hit. Oki has one hit in his first seven at bats. You don't have to worry about getting an offensive juggernaut to come in here. You need somebody that can manage this young pitching staff and keep the ball from getting by them. I think Ryan LaVarnway is available. They should go look into that. Um, Reds legend, Ryan LaVarnway. Reds legend. That's that. That's the big thing, and you hit on the most important part of the reasons that Oki was missing these balls. We're not talking about Luis Sessa being wild and just throwing the ball all over the place. That's Luis Sessa's bread and butter is the low slider that dips below the bat, and if he can't throw that, which was obvious he was not going to throw it in that final uh, batter of the inning, which thankfully he still was able to get him out, but if he can't throw that pitch, then you're asking – Luis says it to be a completely different pitcher, but if Chris Oki is catching him, he can't throw that pitch because Chris Oki can't block that pitch. So that you completely change the strategy of your pitcher on the mound and a guy that is supposed to be one of your better relief pitchers. This is absolutely abhorrent to me. And you know, it, it's unfair of me to loop Aramis Garcia in there because you're right. He did call a good game. That was something they were talking about a lot on the broadcast. And even John Sadak gave the stat that when Aramis Garcia has started, I think he has seven starts this year. The Reds have won four of those seven. Well, now it's five of eight. So pretty solid stats there. And honestly, you can tell me about the hitting stuff and how light a hitter he is. That is definitely true, but if you're going to win five out of eight, there must be something going on there with how he manages the pitching staff. But you cannot have just a body as your backup catcher for a month and a half. They've got to go get somebody. The other thing here, um, I I just I think that it, it's showing to me that Nick Crawl has a clear pattern of failure to address needs in a timely manner. I mean, we're talking about catcher, the backup catcher position. We're talking about the bullpen for the last couple of years. The other thing for me, and it made sense last year, whenever the lineup was a juggernaut, they punted defense. This year, the lineup wasn't going to be a juggernaut. 
So why are we still punting defense? The the Arizona Diamondbacks honestly could have had a good argument to win these last two games because their defense was taking runs off the board from the Reds and the Reds defense was putting runs on the board for the Diamondbacks. Like I don't know how the Reds have won these last two games because of how different those two sides have been. Fielding has been a huge disparity and that's another mark that I put on Nick Crawl. You know, I completely agree with you, Jeff, especially on that bullpen component. I mean, we've been screaming about this bullpen for two <laughs> seasons now, and they have done minimal effort to try and address it. I mean, really minimal. I mean, everybody wants to point to the to the Sessa, Michael Gibbons, and uh, don't tell me that was a Justin plan. Wilson, but that was not a plan. They they scrambled oh. in the week of the trade deadline and kind of made something happen. Uh, you know, this is the front office that brought to you stellar quotes like, we're going to wait until we're healthy and then see what we have. How is that <laughs> working out for you? If they're going to wait until this particular team is healthy, oh my goodness. Because coming up, we will talk about how <laughs> insult and injury have both been added uh, heading into tonight or today rather uh, wrap up of this three game set in Arizona, Jeff. Uh, it looks to me like not only one, but two players may have suffered an injury uh, in the extra innings uh, out in Phoenix. We will talk about that coming up. A couple players suffered injuries late in last night's game, and that could create havoc on this Reds roster. Uh, but if you want to stay healthy so that you don't miss time, get yourself some AG1 from Athletic Greens. So you're probably asking yourself, what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your ability to recover, your ability to focus, and it even fights off aging. Basically, it does all of the things. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. It costs less than $3 a day. So you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit at the local coffee shop. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you're eating keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, or an exclusive built bar diet, get yourself some AG1. It will work for you right now. It's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network right now for your to place your order. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting statistics. Oh, tough words today, Jeff. Your betting statistics and sports information. You can find all of the latest sports developments, news, and odds. They include this year's basketball championship matchups, the NHL hockey playoffs as they're coming to a conclusion, the Major League Baseball 2022 season, and of course, all of the latest fighting news. They've got your MMA. They've got your UFC. They've got your boxing because boxing is still a thing. Did you know boxing is still a thing? It is. Head over to betonline.net right now. They are your continued source for all of your sports wagering information. Uh, if you want to know where to place your bets, you can read about it on betonline.net. They've got you covered for things that include live betting, esports, and so much more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Betonline.net, it's where the game starts. And you can check out the awesome line. Actually, the Reds are only a slight underdog to complete the sweep, plus 108 with Luis Castillo on the mound against Zach Gallen. Going to be interesting to see. I'm, I might. Uh, so I might which which way are you going on that so I know how to bet the other way? <laughs> <laughs> well, we said we said we might take this third game, so That's you true. almost had me convinced. So I—that's yeah, true. I, I love me some Luis Castillo, La Piedra yeah, on the Piedra. mound 
for the Reds. Listen, make sure you are following us on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at S. Offenbaker. That's with two Fs. You can follow Jeff at Jeff Carr with three Fs because spelling is difficult for him. And you can follow the show at Locked on Reds. There's no Fs in that. Also, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our exclusive bonus video content. It's all right there on YouTube. All right, Jeff, big problems, maybe? developed in the extra innings of last night's game. Uh, what we know for sure is Almora Jr. removed himself from the game after the top of the 12th. He uh, he hit a triple. Uh, he managed to come around and score on India's hit, and then he immediately went to the trainer, and he was out of the game. As a matter of fact, uh, the Reds had to uh, shuffle some people around and put Reynolds in the outfield, which lost them the DH if that game had continued. Luckily, it did not, but that was going to be a big deal. Uh, so I'm a little bit concerned about that. The second injury I am I'm very concerned about, and that involves Jonathan India diving back into second base, trying to avoid being doubled off. He was at first called safe, but then uh, replay review overturned that. He was out on the play, but he immediately grimaced and was clutching his left shoulder. Uh, if I recall correctly, that is the shoulder that he has popped out previously that he has had injuries, injuries with. Uh, I'm really concerned about that. Now, listen, India did not leave the game. He finished it out. He stayed in and played defense in the bottom of the 12th but with it being a day game tomorrow i would be shocked if india is in the lineup uh for this final game in arizona and it does raise some concerns about uh if india is going to be out for any extended period of time uh, the reds have pretty much exhausted their ability jeff to compensate for any more injuries. Uh, Aristides Aquino, who was the last outfield compensation for injury, is already on the injured list. So if Almora Jr. is going to miss any more time, uh, you have to hope that Max Schrock is ready to go and ready to go immediately. 100%. That's the only move that I can really think because now you're asking TJ Friedel to be an everyday outfielder. And I know that Friedel and Schrock are both lefties, so I'm not necessarily sure that you can really get a platoon going there. It's just, okay, who's tired? Well, we'll bring him out and we'll put in the guy that's not tired. But this team is just so decimated with injuries already. With Almora, he was filling in very admirably for Tyler Naquin, and I was really liking what he was putting together. But with him missing time, and I don't know, I, I looked at the India slide. And I know he stayed there for a minute, and I know it took him a minute to get up, and he kind of grimaced when he got up, but I don't necessarily think that this is a bad injury. I do think it will keep him out of the lineup. I totally agree with you, and it should. They should be very, very cautious with him, but I don't think this is something that he will miss significant time with. Almora, on the other hand, taking himself out of the game, you got to wonder about that because he is a dude that is fighting for his major league life, not not just Red's life, but fighting for his major league life with how he performs day in and day out with the Reds. So I got to believe that this is a little bit more than just nothing. And yeah, the solutions are very few on this team. Again, this is not necessarily something that I put squarely on Nick Crawl because we've had a lot of injuries to this Reds team, but this is something where the general manager should consider going and getting somebody. And I got to believe that that's not even on his to-do list tomorrow. I think like eating nope. Cheerios is higher up on his to-do list than that. Interestingly enough, if this were to result, and I agree with you, I don't think India is heading back to the injured list. I don't think he'll miss significant time. But if he were to go back on the injured list, that would mean, once again, recalling our guy, Aleo Lopez from AAA Louisville, for what would be the fourth of his fifth allowable recalls. <laughs> and it is only, as we record, June 14th. So I think that uh, Aleo Lopez is going to run out of options before this season is over. That's really where we're heading. But I want to circle back to this outfield thing for just a second. And this is not in the show notes, and I love putting you on the spot, and I'm going to. But if the answer is not Max Strzok, if he's not ready, if they feel like they have to do something different, uh, could you speculate a little bit on who is available in Louisville? that they could give a look-see to, to, to get some outfield reps? I mean, you know, you mentioned Shadrola in the past. Would that be your guy if if it's not going to be Max Rock? Man, that might be the only option. And the fact that the Reds have not even given him a look since spring training, because he was up in spring training, but 
it does make you wonder if they think he's ready or not. And the fact that we haven't seen him at all makes me believe that they don't think that he is ready because we keep seeing Aristides Aquino and we know what Aristides Aquino is. I, I think that it would be an emergency situation that they'd almost have to bring up Cedrola and be like, hey, you know, th this is our mantra, right? This is what the Reds front office does. Whoever's in the AAA that's healthy, bring them up, right? We're not going to go trade for somebody because that would cost money. I don't know. I Cedrola is the only guy that I could think of. Like out, outside of that, you are getting into some names that are just too far out from being ready because you're not going to bring up like a Michael Ciani or somebody like that, or you're not going to see like a Jacob Herdebees, which I think he plays outfield, um, or Robbie Tenorowitz or something like that. It's, it's gotta be Lorenzo Cedrola. And you're probably talking about a dude that's going to give you one hit in every 15 at bats at the major league level. And you know, when I sat down with Doug Gray on Sunday for the a lefty in the bullpen segment on the YouTube video feed, uh, he mentioned that, you know, Louisville at this point has been pretty much pillaged for players that can come up to the major league level and, and be contribute in any meaningful way. So, uh, hopefully that we don't come to this. Hopefully Almora jr. Is just something that could, could be back in and we don't have to make any roster moves and hopefully Jonathan India is just good to go. Uh, and then we won't there, have to face these problems. There is one more guy. And I just remember this because it was one of those whatever moves they added Stuart Fairchild as a non roster player. That's right. They did. Now that would mean that a 40 man roster move would be forthcoming if they were going to add him to the roster, but they could bring him up and use him in an emergency situation that would just require kind of a important 40 man roster move there. But yeah, that's the only other it's, it's Stuart Fairchild and you have to make a 40 man roster move or it's Lorenzo Cedrola. And I can't even remember if he's on the 40 man roster, to be honest with you. So yeah, it's, it's dicey right now. If you're talking about extended uh, time away for Albert Almora. Yeah, hopefully that is not an issue that we have to face. You know, again, he stayed in the game after the triple and and scored that run and then removed himself from the game. So hopefully it's just something that a little treatment, maybe some rest tomorrow will rectify. Yeah, and I, I think uh, the easy thought here is the Reds really aren't in a position to deal with any more injuries. You know what, Steve, though, that's going to wrap us up. But we're going to wrap up on an injury note. But hey, the Reds won one and a half games out of third place in the NL Central. That's how we'll wrap this up. And coming up on tomorrow's podcast, we'll have a crossover with Miller Thomas from Locked On Diamondbacks. Hopefully, I'll be able to gloat about a series sweep. We'll see how that plays out, though, as Luis Castillo is on the mound. Thanks for making Locked On Reds your first listen. Now make Locked On MLB your second listen. Sully's got you covered on all things baseball, past and present, because he's been a baseball fan for a really long time. Plus, he talked to Steve the other day about how crazy the NL Central is. And by crazy, crazy. we mean who the heck wants to win this division anyway. But... As we know, the Reds probably aren't going to be that team, but they're going to be pesky. They're going to be fighting because they can do this every so often with the players that they have on their team, so long as they're healthy. And Steve, as we try to watch a healthy Cincinnati Reds team, what can people expect from us? They can expect you and me to be right here helping them be locked on Reds every single day. See you tomorrow.